we're now able to move on to the Insight Reports. There are nine possible report templates incorporating various panel and data types, graphs and tables, current, past, and future data sources and trends. The Trending Jobs Data Table uses source scheduler data to identify trends in job executions and target jobs with increasing runtime specifically. We covered this template in the Thick Client Reporting Tools. This is the Web UI counterpart in table formats. We use this table to isolate the jobs that cause or exacerbate batch window creep. Most IT organizations have implemented continuous improvements in various forms, and batch window contraction is a major part of enhancing proposed IT services. One of the simplest and most direct ways is to comb the entire workload base for jobs with long and increasing runtimes, in other words, trending up. This report casts the widest possible nets, meaning all job executions, and finds those that show a combination of both long and increasing runtimes. The thick client includes the option of setting a custom trending period, which is always strongly discouraged because of AI statistics engine. That option simply does not exist in the web UI. You must rely on preset periods defined in the config tool. By default, those are either 30 or 90 days, although administrators can create more. Goodness of fit is a standard statistic calculation, and in our case, is the product of runtime length and upward trends. You set trending and goodness of fit minimums, and AI scans the scheduler's entire workload history. Higher values mean more restricted searches. For example, setting a minimum goodness of fit of 70% produces a very selective list of jobs with presumably high and increasing runtimes. These are the prime candidates for design improvements. If you need a refresh on goodness of fit, we recommend revisiting the analytics course that was produced in the Thick Clients. It's covered in the modules on reports. This is the table. We have a list of jobs sourced directly from the scheduler with a number of runs. Obviously, more runs means a larger data pool, which means more accurate data. We also have the data pertinent to process improvements, average runtime, upwards trends by week in both actual time and percentage, and finally, goodness of fits. Many of these jobs do not run for very long, and your focus should be on those that do. Also note the outliers, which point to runtime fluctuations and possible inconsistencies in scheduling design. The edit menu is consistent with the table. The entire workload base is assumed as the base data pool, and so there's no filter on the job name. You can only use one of the predefined training periods. Then you set a minimum number of runs to limit your search to larger data samples, goodness of fit, and upward trends. The job end graph uses source scheduler data to map job execution end times over time to reveal patterns in workload delays. For cyclical executions at set times, erratic end times are generally caused by delayed executions, and the report outlines the type of delay, which is helpful in determining root cause. The table lists instances of executions that end later than what you would expect, and then tells you what caused this. Each point on the graph is an individual execution, and so the late completions are exposed instantly. You can then drill down by clicking any of the data points. The resulting table is the Jobs Run History Data Table, which is report number four in the list of Insight templates. It shows basic data, like dates and end times, as well as the type of delay causing the problem. Some delays are human and operational in nature. Others are technical or by design. If you need a refresher on delay types, we recommend revisiting the AI analytics course produced in the Thick Client, specifically the modules on reporting. The graph plots execution end times over time. In this particular instance, we have a job that runs once a day with three executions that ended sooner than normal. After investigating those specific data points, we find that they were ended manually for various reasons, prompting further investigation into who and why. You can click on any of those data points. This displays the job run history table with the date, run ID, duration, and the type of delay that caused the situation. We cover this table later in this course. The edit menu consists of a filter on the job name, and you have the option of selecting multiple jobs, which will produce a much longer report. You can cross-reference with AI job streams, machine, status, and so forth. You should also enter a time period, which should be at least 30 days. The job run history graph is similar, but it plots run times instead of end times. Just like the job end time graph, clicking on each data point provides drill down functions into the job run history table, which is report number four. 
The job run history graph is almost identical to the end time graph, only it plots run times. This particular job, job B.CP, has a runtime that ranges from 12 minutes to about 25. When you click each individual point, you display the job run history table with the exact data, type of delay, the termination status, and more. The edit menu is the same as the end time graph. The job run history table shows the history of executions for a given time period. It includes the run ID, the start time, end time, duration, status, and the various delays. Clicking on the end times and run times graph data points leads to this table. We've already seen this table multiple times and you should know what it means. This is the edit menu and it shouldn't be much of a surprise. You apply a filter on the job, select the job or jobs you want and the time period, as well as any other filter you need. The job dependency data table is useful for the production of job documentation. You select the job and the report produces a map in table form of all up and downstream connections, in other words, all predecessors and successors. It becomes very easy to illustrate the job's place in a process supporting an application. We covered the job dependency graph in the module and vision. You can use this table as a complement to shed light on a complex design set involving multiple relationships, especially when they cross over. The report uses data sourced from the scheduler and you can only report on a single job. The report has multiple tables for the job itself, the predecessors, and successors. It shows the level which is useful for multi-layered embedded processes, the external ID in the scheduler, the job type, task, container, and so forth, and various other types of information that will vary from one scheduler to the next. The edit menu is the same as the graphs. Since we can only select one job, we enter a text string matching the job of interest in the job name field. This produces a list of possible options in the Select Job drop-down. You can just narrow the search down until you find the right job. This option, All Children Inherit Level from Parents, shows every single upstream dependency even if they're obvious. This means that if you select a job which is embedded in several layers of containers, all upstream dependencies are displayed all the way to the top container, which could make for a lengthy report. By unchecking this feature, you simplify and streamline the outputs. The same goes for non-impacting box children. If the selected job has children which are containers with no impact on the job, you can exclude them. Finally, you can select the number of parentage layers you need. The Batch Progress Report is a snapshot document that shows executions, regardless of status, in a very narrow slice of time in the present. You're trying to get a sense of the current situation, but you're really only interested in a handful of business critical jobs. You're not looking to output everything, but rather produce a neat and tidy list of items that you care about. The report produces a table showing the past, current, and future executions over the last and next few hours with the start and end time and status. In the edit menu, you set different filters on job names and other specifics and specify the window plus and minus X number of hours. The batch cycle report is a comprehensive list of completed job stream runs in a narrow window of time. It uses AAI data and job streams. You're reporting on all of AAI's run data, say for the past 24 hours, irrespective of job, agents, or other filters, to establish the relative performance of operations as reflected in AAI. The table shows the full list of job stream runs grouped by business area. We also have the defined SLA, the end time in green for normal runs, and red for SLA overruns. The last three columns on the left, business impact, IM, and reason, are there for reasons of descending compatibility and are inactive as a result. The edit menu is very simple and has no filters. You simply set the reporting period. The job stream run and cycle report reports on past, current, and future AI job streams. However, for this report, we use business areas as the organizing factor and then report on the business area's batch cycle. We see all job streams for that business area and its previous, current, or future batch cycle. This is useful for the organization's division managers who want to get a sense of the situation for their group specifically. If you recall from the client-based courses, we use business areas to recreate the organization in AI. We can have business areas for finance, sales, operations, and so forth. Job streams pertaining to each group are mapped to the corresponding business area, which helps us model AI based on the human organization for which it's implemented. 
Each business area can have a batch cycle, in other words, a span of time during which processes execute, say sales between 5 p.m. and 11 p.m., ops between 9 p.m. and 3 a.m., finance between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m., and so forth. This is standard practice to prevent excessive workload overlap. Various tabs in the clients will then report on these cycles based on the business area. This is reflected here in this report. The table shows multiple or even all job streams for a given business area. You can then specify the associated batch cycle, previous, current, or next. It also contains SLA information. The table outputs the selected job streams for the selected business area for the selected cycle, along with end times, SLA, on time, and overrun time, and if it's actual or forecasted. No surprise on the edit menu. You select the business area you want to see, the job streams using the control key on your keyboard, and then the time span for the cycle, previous, current, or next.